From born leaders to amazing samurais, stay tuned to number one to hear about the most amazing female warriors of all time. Number 10. Fu Hao Regarded as the earliest known female general during China's Shang Dynasty, Fu Hao lived around 3,000 years ago. This was during China's Bronze Age, and all known knowledge of her feats were found carved into bone and tortoise shells. Feats that included at least one crusade where she led 3,000 soldiers into battle. In 1976, her tomb was discovered in Anyang, China. And, much to the archaeologist's surprise, there were not only over a hundred weapons buried in the tomb alongside her, but they also found the remains of 16 slaves who had been buried alive with the warrior in order to serve her in the afterlife. All of these serve as indicators that she was a high-ranking military leader and that her exploits must far exceed the little that is actually known about her. Number 9. Artemisia I of Caria Named after the famous Greek goddess of the hunt Artemis, Artemisia was the queen of Halicarnassus, a city that still exists in modern-day Turkey. She was an ally of the king of Persia and served as a naval commander for his military. Known for her intelligent strategies in war, she was also known to be ruthless and do whatever was necessary to guarantee her and her people's survival. The best example of this comes in the form of Persia's battle with the Greeks. Upon seeing a Greek ship coming straight for her own, she rammed one of her friendly Persian ships, sinking it in the process. In doing this, she tricked the Greeks into thinking that she was one of them, while Xerxes believed that she'd actually rammed a Greek ship. According to the records, she did not die in battle, but allegedly, after the man she loved rejected her, she jumped from the top of the tall rocks in Leuca, Greece. It is said that she is buried nearby the very cliff where she jumped. Number 8. Lozen before we talk about Lozen, take a moment to like this video using the thumbs up button below. Also subscribe to our channel and click the little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all future videos from Zero to Hero. Lozen was an Apache warrior who fought alongside her brother in the 1870s. She and her brother's tribe had been forced into the San Carlos Reservation, also known as Hell's 40 Acres, due to its terrible living conditions. Once there, she and her brother Victorio rallied up some soldiers and fought back against the settlers in New Mexico's Black Mountains, striking fear into their hearts and taking back the land. Lozen was best known for her taking pity on women and children during the raids and would help them to safety in order to save them from injury or death during the battles. Despite her soft spot for helping women and children, her brother is known to have said that she was his right hand stronger and braver than any man and just as smart in strategy, which was definitely a compliment for the time. Unfortunately, her brother was killed in a battle while she was helping others get to safety, so she then joined part of a vengeance-fueled attack that crossed all of New Mexico in 1881, and she even later fought alongside Geronimo before his surrender. She was subsequently captured and is believed to have died from tuberculosis while in prison. Number 7. Nicano to Keko. Samurais are best known for their incredible discipline and ability to wield katanas without cutting themselves a new breathing hole. Nakano is one of only a few known female samurai of all time. She was well educated in martial arts and played an important role in the Boshin War, a Japanese civil war that lasted from the 3rd of January 1868 until the 18th of May 1869. As she was not recognized as part of the official army, she led her own squad, known as the Joshitai, or Women's Army, into battle. Her prowess in the war was well noted through her use of the Naginata, which is a Japanese polearm, but she was shot in the chest during battle. Fearing that she would be mutilated and her head kept as a war trophy, she instructed her sister to cut off her head and bury it. Her sister obliged, and today, her head is buried below a pine tree at Hokaji Temple in Fukushima. Number 6. Tomoa Gozen While we are on female samurai, 700 years before Nakano became a legend, Tomoa Gozen was one of the few other female samurais ever recorded. Famous for her participation in the Genpai War, which lasted from 1180 to 1185, she broke all prejudice at the time and was allowed to fight alongside the men. History records her as being an extremely strong archer and swordsman, able to fight either on foot or horseback. She was said to be respected, fearless, and even beautiful. 
She led her armies to victory on multiple occasions and was regarded one of Japan's greatest swordsmen. In her final battle, her greatest ally and the man who allowed her to join the army in the first place, Minamoto no Yoshinaka, was killed while Tomo managed to escape the battle. After which, she gave up her sword, retired from the military, and married. After her husband passed away, it is believed that Tomoa became a nun. Number 5. Ludmila Pavlichenko Times have changed, and the term warrior is not typically used these days. But with that said, modern soldiers could be considered our equivalent of warriors of old. And even in these modern times, there are women making their mark in the military. Inner Ludmila Pavlichenko a Russian sniper who served in the First World War and got over 300 confirmed kills. After finishing her schooling, Ludmila enrolled herself in the army and was offered a position as a nurse. She rejected it and requested to be put into combat. Remarkably, considering the time, her request was accepted and she received training as a sniper. During her time in the military, she earned a reputation for herself, getting the upper hand on enemy snipers who had also achieved upwards of 100 kills themselves. Proving herself to be an asset to the military, she was unfortunately eventually injured in mortar fire and removed from the field, but was still promoted to the rank of major once the war was over. Number 4. Joan of Arc Seen as quite possibly the most well-known female warrior ever, Joan of Arc was supposedly pushed to join the military when she had visions of the Archangel Michael and was urged to join the army. At first, she was mocked for joining the military, but after her influence ended the Siege of Orleans in just nine days, she was taken more seriously by fellow foot soldiers and generals alike. By the age of 17, she was already playing an important role in the French military, and her strategy was adopted by many of her male counterparts for more than 25 years after her death. Unfortunately, she was captured by the English in 1430 and was sentenced to death by being burned at the stake after being found guilty of heresy and cross-dressing. Her case received a retrial after her death, though, and charges against her were eventually overturned. Too late to save her life, of course. But 460 years after her death, she would be declared a saint by Pope Benedict XV. Number 3. Kutulun Depending on who you talk to, wrestling gets a pretty bad reputation as being fake. Assuming you're referring to the one containing men jumping off of ropes, of course, and not the high school sport. But back in the 13th century, wrestling in Mongolia was dominated by a woman. Not just any Mongolian woman, but the great-great-granddaughter of legendary ruler Genghis Khan. Cthulhu gained her notoriety through her brute strength and ability to defeat any man that stood in her way in the arena. Not only was she a famed wrestler, but also a great soldier and was an accomplished horsewoman and archer as well. Over time, she grew rich through wrestling and her ability to defeat any who stood in her way, whether it be in the arena or on the battlefield. And she often rode into battle alongside her father to defend Western Mongolia and Kazakhstan against the then Mongol leader Kublai Khan. Some of her exploits were even noted by Marco Polo, who wrote of her riding into battle, grabbing one of the soldiers and carrying him back to her father, as deftly as a hawk pounces on a bird. Number 2. Queen Bodica Queen Bodica was just a normal old queen until her husband's murder saw the Romans invade their kingdoms. Despite his will demanding that it be given jointly to the Romans and his daughters, not only did the Romans invade their allied land, but also torture Queen Bodica's daughters. Calling on all of her allies, Queen Bodica rallied up a thousand troops at her command and she toppled the Roman capital, among others. By the end of her attack, it is believed that she had slaughtered between 70 and 80,000 Romans. Her victories had even forced Emperor Nero to consider pulling the Roman forces from Britain completely. But then, after a Roman victory over Bodica, the tides turned in his favor. Not much is known about what happened to the queen after the battle, as there is no record of her ever being captured, but it is believed that she either died by illness or suicide. Today, a bronze statue of her still stands on the western side of the Westminster Bridge in London, and she is still remembered favorably due to her legacy. Number 1. Grace O'Malley Back in the 16th century, there was a pirate ruling the waters around the Umel Kingdom in Ireland, a female pirate who had been at sea since a teenager. Grace O'Malley wanted to sail with her father in her teenage years, but her mother refused it, saying that her hair was too long and would be caught in the ropes on board. So Grace remedied this by cutting her hair short and jumping on board with her father. After her father's death and her inheriting his fleet, Grace and her men would board the ships of anybody who sailed too close to their land. 
demanding attacks from them, and if they refused, they were met with death or injury. Her greatest feat, however, came when she faced off against Queen Elizabeth I when she received a letter stating that she would be allowed to continue her piracy as long as it was only against the enemies of England. This resulted in Grace sailing straight to England itself and freeing her son and brother who had been captured. After this, she was allowed to basically do as she wished in their waters. Who is your favorite female warrior of all time? Let us know in the comments below and take care.